This is Movies in Contemplation with Jirak and... Oh, am I talking to Jesus. you? Yeah. Hello, everybody. Welcome back again. Thank you for rejoining us again. And I have to say, I have a funny thing that I was thinking about before we were going to record this. Our last movie was Bring It On. Bring It that On. That was my pick. Yeah. And I talked about how amazing and fun it was to do all those crazy flips and stunts and choreography. And right now, I'm like sitting with a pulled inner thigh muscle. (laughs) I don't even know how it happened, but I think it's... Uh, the culprit was sitting in a chair for how many hours were we sitting today? Because if you don't, if you don't know, and you wouldn't know if you don't follow us on our social media. Yeah, I'm not the best at keeping up with our social media. I'm getting better. I'm trying. You're getting. We're getting there. We're getting there. But we are avid D and D, aka D and D players, Dungeons and Dragons players. Yeah, we love it. Yeah, we do it. Every other Sunday. Every other Sunday. It's the only time or... that we can find, you know, life mm-hmm. gets in the way like it does most oh, times. Absolutely. But you know what? It doesn't give it it, it. it is really fun to do. If we're going to go this route real quick. I would yeah, love I, to. I think that D&D, and I'm so glad, and yeah, I'm going to say it, I was a closeted D&D player. And the thing is, I, up. I knew nothing about it. And when you first brought it up to me, what was it, like a year ago? Yeah. I was like, no. That sounds so stupid. Yeah. And now I'm like kicking myself, like finding it stupid because you and I are theater majors. Right. Like we have the fucking diplomas and the debt to show yeah, how dedicated we were to being performers. This game really gave us the opportunity to create like yeah. create a character, make a backstory, and create this world. And Jirok, I'm sorry, but you are... Sorry, not sorry, but you are... I can't, I can't even think of a name to call you, but you are a very... Any DM would be lucky to get to see you do it. Uh-huh. Because you are so good at it, because you're so imaginative, you're dedicated. He creates sets for us to really get into the world. Mm. And I really wanted to bring that up because that is something a little on on like a personal side from yeah. from our lives that we like to do for fun. Yeah. Like it's not even it's not just this podcast. Like this has become a real thing. Yeah. Thing for us and if you love D&D mm. like I, I uh, like we, yeah. Like you've loved to do and I'm learning to love it. <clears throat> yeah. Even it, more. I, I love it. I've always had, like, a very hard interest in it. Mm. But again, I, you know, when I was in high school, I was afraid to admit that I liked to play it. Yeah, I Which was didn't a- make sense, because I play RPG video games like a motherfucker. And, of course, everybody will be like, oh, did you play, like, did you play what I... Uh, Final Fantasy or any oh, of that. Oh yeah, that it was a big like, thing. Yeah, and it would be like or anything. Final Fantasy and, and what was the, like, the Disney one? Oh, that like Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom or Hearts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but any RPG, you know, like uh, Dragon Age, any of those that were really popular, I and think people the- would be like, "Oh yeah, I love that." And then you say, "Oh well, yeah, I was just with my D and D group," and they'd be like, "What the what? fuck are you talking?" Yeah, like record but, scratch. Yeah, like, but ah! you know what? Right, but you know what. D and D has come a long way. It, it has. really has. It's coming back. Everybody's coming out of the D and D closet, and everybody is. I, I just I love it. I love what all of the D and D streaming communities are doing. I love what Critical Role did. Mm-hmm. I love what you know all of those other like wonderful channels like channels streamers. <laughs> yeah, and, and even even if you're not like I don't want to get like. I know we we've got a a movie to talk about, but even if you're not a performer, like this game gives you an opportunity to play someone that you don't get to yeah. play in your real life. That you might like it's a, it's bringing out that part of you that you're too shy to bring out, yeah. and get to play in this fantasy world <laughs> where anything can happen. Anything can happen. Yeah. It's the the luck and everything in there it's, is a roll of the dice just like fucking exa- life, I'll tell you. Exactly. A- anything good can that. happen and a lot of bad shit can happen. <laughs> Nine times out of ten, a lot of bad shit happens. <laughs> yeah. Like, for my character, uh, it's a bard who also is 
a half elf and a drag queen. No drag queen. I like, love it. I'm a I'm obsessed with drag queens. I have been for many years and I hope when I leave this body that I become a drag queen in my next life. Yeah. But I love the culture and I love everything about it and this character allows me to play that fantasy character that I've that person that I've always wanted to be that's very outgoing and very uh uh, what's that my movie? What did I say earlier? I said in our game. What did you say? The last the, showman? Oh, The Greatest Showman. The Greatest the Showman. The Greatest Showman, yeah. Hugh Jack. This is me. Yeah. Kind of thing. And we had such a good game today. Like yeah, I'm, I'm still so pumped about it. But anyway. Yeah, you guys did it. If you tore that ass up. We, I tore that ass up. You tore that ass up literally. But, um, yeah, if you guys like ever want to talk with D&D with us, we're so game. Please do For it. it. Please. But um, today... Jirok. Today, we are going to be talking about uh, D&D aside for the moment. The stage we'll, is yours. You know, talk to us next time. But uh, <clears throat> D&D aside, let's talk about Big Trouble in Little China. Why do you like this movie so much? Oh my god, why do I love this movie so much? I love this movie because, number one, um, Kurt Russell is just amazing. And he is a great actor and just so damn funny. He is such a funny fucking guy. In this... And overboard, all oh, kinds of shit. Well, the the thing is, like, I love Kurt Russell too, and me, you had me at Overboard. Yeah, like that's a movie that you and I. I feel like that movie is something that you and I connect with so much. Oh my just god! Just because yeah. no one else, I think, really talks about Overboard. No, and we will never mention the new one. What which yeah, we just did. the the new that's one okay. that that will not be named, but. That'll never show up on any of our screens. No. But yeah, Kurt Russell is an amazing actor. He is freaking funny, and Kim Cattrall's in it, and there are some really good people in it. Um, But for me, I've seen bits and pieces of it, like, years ago. I was at a house of a friend of a friend. They were just, they just so happened to, like, watch it. Yeah. And it seemed really campy and goofy, but that's all I got from it. But I, it just never... That movie never crossed my path, my path until you. Yeah. And you quote it. Well, religiously. A lot. Religiously. Like, I know, I know the main... Let's talk about my condition. What exactly is wrong with it? Shh. Over my head. <laughs> Over my head. You know what I like to say when it's Miller time? I don't care. <laughs> okay. Anyway. <laughs> so, moving on. Yes. A, um... You know, the, this movie When did this is, come uh, out? Like, this was uh, 86, I believe. 87. No, 80, fuck me. 80, I swear 86. It's Where's the damn Where's the damn year? There it is, 86. I was 86. Right. 86. So, I was 86, one. 86, and it's a Carpenter film. So Carpenter, it is John. And that's another thing that was a JC. cool, like another like plus. Like, okay, uh, Kurt Russell, Kim Cattrall, John Carpenter. I love... His yeah. other films like Halloween and like The Thing, just to like name a f- yeah. you know a, f- a few. But this movie was very different for me. His style of movies, I always thought of John Carpenter as a yeah. horror ga- uh, guy. Yeah, and this movie definitely has his horror. It it, it does in it parts. Does, in it's, parts, it's it's mild. It's it, a it, it's a mild one. And I could. Uh, just not getting too into it, but I can see how much John Carpenter loves working with people that do the uh, special effects, yeah. like the handmade, you know, using sticky tack and glue mm-hmm. and anything to create something that is disgusting and horrible and scary, but yeah. awesome. Totally got that vibe, but you are for sure going to have to. Oh, gladly. I will. Take I the reins on um, how this movie goes yeah. because Thank it was you. a little confusing. No, I, and I, mind. and I totally agree when it's your first time watching this particular, 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 film, it is. Um, so the movie starts Wait. off late in Shit, we didn't talk about the wine. We didn't. Let's get to it. Uh, what did we pick? Komodo dragon? Yes. Okay. Komodo dragon, folks. Unfortunately, was not one of our favorites. Yeah, it's not the best. It was a red blend, but it was... It, it just didn't have really any flavor. Yeah. What's like, the percent of that? Like 13? Not even... It, w- it wasn't anything like... Not even like I think it was like a 12.5. Yeah, like a 12. And it's... 
not particularly cheap. I it mean, wasn't. it's not like, like we... I mean, folks, we're not going to sit here and buy $20 of wine. We, we but, never do. Like, we don't even... Like, I would say, like, 12 13 Like, that would be yeah, our, like... This was about 15 or so. And yeah, especially, honestly... Especially if we find something where the, the label and the art really fits the movie that we're watching. Yeah. But this was just a... It was almost... It was bland. Like too dry. It was vanilla. If you will, yeah. Yeah, like very vanilla. And we love dry, but this was just we a little do. dry, dry, dry. But there's a difference between dry and flavorless. Dry, dry, dry. Yeah. But, you know, what? we we bought the wine and we're going to drink it and finish it and see yeah. how we feel afterwards. But when it comes to, uh, like, the taste buds and things. Pure vanilla. Sweeteners. Mm. That's a 10. Yeah. Gross. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, it's all right, but it, it just lowered. The, if the price was lowered, it would probably be better. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, I think we paid a little more than what it's worth. What it's worth, mm -hmm. in our opinion, because we're in our opinion. Yes. Again, not reviewers. Just we're not reviewers. An this is just coming from some like an opinion. An opinion of an opinion of us that we we love red blends. Exactly. That's a, that's our main choice obviously if you right. if you are listeners of the pod. Yep. Uh, we always pick a wine. A red wine. Red wine. Red wine, red blend. But back to the movie. Yeah. So, okay, so we start off with um, a lawyer speaking to um, speaking to uh, Egg Shen, who is played by Victor Wong. Um, He's in a lot of films. He is in a in lot of 80s. films. He was. He was 80s, early 90s, uh, three ninjas. But <laughs> yes. Three stands of rock. Um, hmm? I'm, I loved. I love him. Love Wong. He's good. Oh yeah, he is. Um, so it starts off with him and a lawyer, Pretty and they're child. they're talking, and the lawyer is trying. To, so this is one of those moments where the movie starts off where everything already happened. Yes. And there he in Wong is telling the story of what happened in the film. Yeah. So the lawyer's trying to find Jack Burton, and Wong's just like, "You leave Jack Burton alive." Which, just Jack, out. Jack Burton, that's a pretty, that, that's a powerhouse of a name. Yeah, it is. I'm Jack not going to lie. Jack Burton, like if you... Jack Burton, even Pork if you, Chap Express. Even if you don't know the movie, they did pick a good name for the hero, the, yeah. the main the main dude, yep. whatever they call it back then. But that name... Yeah, and he is. He's, he's a beer drinking... Listening, truck driving, truck driving. Loves to hear his own voice. Loves to hear like, his own voice. I, I love, one of my favorite things about it is that he is a truck driver and he gets on the truck radio. He gets on the on his like radio. Like he has his own radio like show. Like he has his own radio show. He just gets on. There's Jack Burton on the Pork Chop Express coming out there to whoever's listening. You know, yeah. he just does his own little radio show on the fucking, on his truck network and I love it. It's yeah. just, oh my God, I love it. It's like what we're doing right now. This is right. We're over here on the pork chap expand no. Um but you know, I, I I love it. It's it's great in that aspect. So they're talking and then Wong, Egg Chen, he shows the lawyer that magic exists and does mm. this little electricity summon. Then we cut to Jack Burton driving through Cal back roads of California. Mm hmm Sam San uh San Francisco. He's going to, to San, San Francisco. Fran. So he's on a lot of back roads. He's driving up. He's doing his wonderful uh, monologue. And, uh, and I've, I've only been to San Francisco once. Never so been. I, I was a freshman in high school. I did get to see Rent for the first time. Oh, and I lovely. got to experience amazing food. And that's all I got. Yeah. That's all I can remember. I mean, yeah. I, well, I've never been, obviously. But... Yeah. That's um, just, you know, if anyone has any questions. Hey, this chick's from Cali. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. San Francisco is, is a bit of a drive. It is. What was from it? the four, Los Angeles two area. Two or four? Is it two or four? Is I don't remember. San Diego it was nineteen ninety nine. Okay. Well, I don't know either. But anyway, yeah, they're driving in, and then he goes to Chinatown, where he drops off pigs, and uh, then he and a couple guys that he knows are playing some type of game. I don't know if it was. I don't know what that damn game is. Well, Baccarat? it seems that, that like clearly he's been there before. So yeah, he, has he goes a, regularly. A previous that route. relationship with these, yeah, with the people. That Obviously, he yeah, yeah. He, he goes that route a lot. He's playing and he wins about a grand. And his friend, the shop owner Wang, mm -hmm. who is a restaurant owner, is all like, you know, double or nothing, Jack. I need my money back. 
And that and, actor is Dennis Dunn? Uh, Wang? Dennis Dunn, yeah. yeah. I've, I've seen him in only a couple things. He was in Warriors of Virtue. That's the only oh, thing okay. I really remember him in. Movie with the kangaroos. Stupid Ruth! But, um... Prince of Darkness, Seer of the Dragon, The yeah. Last Emperor. Okay. Yeah. Well, so, oh, yeah. yeah, he was in The Last He's Emperor. He's got a lot. The Nanny. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, nanny, Doctor Fu. There you go. Making Whoopi. Make okay, what? Anywho, I don't know what the fuck that is. This is porn. I but, love uh, IMDb. Yeah, I know, right? So he says, you know, I need to go to the airport. I need to pick up my fiance, and him owing Jack already more money. Jack's like, all right, well, I'll drive you. Drives him to the airport. They get there, and Jack tries to get fresh with uh, Kim Cattrall's character. Sees her, goes up to her, hits him with some Jack Burton one-liners. And this is a very, uh, if you haven't seen the movie, uh, like, to, uh, Kim Cattrall, to yeah. me, will always be Samantha. I will wear whatever and blow whomever I want as long as I can breathe and kneel. Right. That's... Oh, get out of there. That is her... I don't even care if she does anything. I Like, it would be... I would love for her to do more because she is such a talented actress. Yeah. And she... Not to say that she wasn't bad in this movie, but I feel like... Like, either she didn't realize her potential for being a powerful woman. sex pot yeah. woman, or she, or maybe she was underplaying it. I don't know. So for me, I felt, okay, yeah, she's super strong, but she's Samantha. She, right. she can, she, Samantha always has those, like, little jokes, like, those little, like, comebacks, those little, like, reads to say that are so perfect. Mm -hmm. So that's obviously my fault because that's how I know Kim Cattrall. Because you were seeing too much of Samantha? Absolutely. Because yeah. that's just... Well, yeah, and she's one of those actresses, I'll say it. She kind of, she, she puts Kim Cattrall in as her characters. And that's okay. Put yourself in as your For characters. For sure, because she's fabulous. <laughs> There's a lot of people that do that. Denzel does that. I mean, mm -hmm. everybody does that. A lot of people play if themselves. You, if, you, if an actor has, like, a certain charisma in their actual, like, personality, and it works, fucking use it. If you got it, flaunt it. Right. So they do that, and these gang members show up. What's it get? They show up and try to capture the girl that Kim Cattrall is picking up. And Jack Burton gets in the way. And uh, <laughs> one of my favorite moments of Jack, which there are many in this movie, the guy pulls out a butterfly knife. And then Jack just That's goes... That's the one that goes... Yeah. The, and yeah. then Jack goes, what? <laughs> he was just... What? And I, then I he did pulls find out that very and then, funny. And then he pulls out the, the whatever the fuck baton. And Jack's just like, where'd you get that? <laughs> Like, for me, like, I've actually, like, I've, you know, but I've been recently rewatching South Park. Yeah. And I did find, and I don't know if it was a meant, a meant to be thing, but I did find parts of the humor of this movie very South Park, where something so random happens that you don't think of, and, like, the character's like, what? Like, yeah. Like, really? <laughs> What? What's going on? What the Like, is this really happening right now? Like, yeah. I guess this is a really crazy... Uh, yeah, but like, how, how real life, though? If I'm yeah. at a parking lot and I'm just walking and somebody tries to mug me and just fucking pulls out, like, let's say, if they just pull out a fucking... Uh, God, if you heard that crack baton, right now, that was my fucking thought. I'm sure that happened. I heard it. Oh. If they just pull out, a, like, a tonfa out of their pants... I'll be, I just, yeah, yeah, the cop, if they pulled a tonfa out of their pants, I'd be like, what, really, yeah, what, what? is this happening, is this not the day of guns, <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, not, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> you're pulling out a firebomb and then you're pulling out a, a baton, like one of those things, and I'm yeah. just like, what the fuck, yeah, and I think that's when I, I know you, you did kind of, uh, bring it up while we were watching the film, I got super, confused right away but yeah. you but you just said you're probably not paying attention because you did you not just listen to what or was that after no that was that was that because you were confused in the beginning because you were talking about you were like well because of you were the, like i'm really like, confused i don't know why they're at the airport and yes. i was like so apparently you're not paying attention because you they totally were talking about why they're going to the airport yeah and not to put you on blast but Please, if there I'm is a but if there is a movie that you are not interested in which there are many of movies that i pick that you are not interested in hey this is the you have exactly, is for. exactly. You have a really hard time of paying attention. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very good at like uh, glazing over and pretending yeah. that I'm watching the movie. Yeah, but you, because you know me so well, you know when it, when it happens. Yeah. So all of that, and hopefully you know this, but uh, 
Jack you interrupts this shit, me. and then Wang loses his uh, fiance. Fiance. Uh, what the hell was her name? Um, son of a bitch. What was her name? Margo? Or no? no, no, no. Margo was the reporter. Uh, Mao Yin. Oh, Mao okay. Yin. Um, Mao Yin. Mao Yin. So they kidnap so Mao Yin. So because uh, oh god, she's you, well, pretty. you find out she has well, she green has eye. green eyes. Green eyes. Like they yeah. mentioned green eyes a couple of times, and so does Kim Cattrall's character. She has she green, green eyes, eyes as so. well. Mm-hmm. We'll find and out. And apparently, green eyes on that in Asian women are very rare. Very rare. And I wouldn't know, but uh, apparently well, in the movie they were. Like I had a really good friend in elementary school, and she had like almost like hazel eyes. Hazel would be the lightest. But also, I found uh, a girl that I was uh, cheerle- I started cheerleading with. She would wear these like contacts to try to make her eyes like lighter. If you have experience with this, like let me know. But I just I remember like she would have brown eyes. Let's say she, and she these, would put on blue, um, blue, yes, blue contacts. Yes, you have these amazing dark eyes, and I can connect with that because yeah. I have these dark, almost like charcoal yeah, black do. eyes, and I w- I always love that because. It is different, but some other like races and cultures, dark eyes would be, oh, it's not considered beautiful. So like when the whole color contact eyes became a thing, I remember I would have to go to the eye doctor a lot because my older brother had really bad uh, vision. No. I remember when color contacts became a thing. And you know what is really weird? What? Not weird, but kind of fucked up what? the model that wore the different color contacts was asian and what uh at the what at the first eye doctor that i remember going to oh. and we would and honestly i have these like memories we would go all the time just because my like i said my older brother had like he still does he has like really bad eyesight but the, yeah the lady that was in the advertisement of like the cardboard box of like oh you can have blue eyes green eyes hazel eyes and purple yeah which i've have you ever seen anyone with purple with purple eyes that, that, uh, that would be awesome and not, really, uh, really cool in real life not in real life yeah that that's more of a fantasy thing but the the model wearing the contacts i mean the targaryens had purple eyes and they should have in the show but you and know, they, they don't, have, show, don't have a budget for fucking contact lenses yeah, but they have a... Yeah, anyway, we're not going there. We're not going Game of Thrones. I do know that colored eyes are kind of a big thing yeah. with uh, the Asian culture. And I mm-hmm. think that's... God, dark eyes are beautiful. Yeah. So she's got the green eyes. Yeah. And they, and they, green eyes they, are they take her. Oh, every yeah. eyes are beautiful. Every eyes are beautiful. Honestly. Um, all eyes are beautiful. We don't discriminate on eyes. Here. Absolutely not. So uh, they take her and Jack and Wang running are running through the uh, parking garage trying to get her. And Jack's all like, where? And then Kim Cattrall just points at a direction. He goes, call the cops! And runs after him. And then these guys are storming down the fucking, you know, they're storming down the uh, parking garage. And Jack and Wang, Jack throws Wang <laughs> out of the way and then they're getting up, and god damn it again, another favorite of mine. Jack just gets up after they try to run them over, and he just goes, Son of a bitch must pay. And then fucking they charge after him in his truck, and they're and following him. And it's just guys. funny, like, the only reason I, like, chuckled at certain jokes... Is because I said them. Not just you, but... Oh, what, our, our, our friends. Clan. Our, yeah. our friends, yeah. And it, and I guess to me it was funny when you guys said it, but I didn't understand the re- the reference. reference yeah. But that just made me laugh because like, oh, ha, 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 that's so funny because that's when what's <laughs> you it, when you it. you guys say it all the time. Yeah, that's yeah. when you said it. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I. Yeah. So they do all that, and then we go skip. You know, them driving through, and they go to an alley, mm-hmm. and they're driving down the alley, and then they see a funeral happening. Yeah. Uh, the uh, Chang Sing, a gang apparently a good guy gang, are uh, walking through at a funeral. One of their elders, I guess, died. And the uh, Wing Kong, I believe their names were, the Wing Kong, Red Turbans, are walking down, and then we start off with this Chinese standoff. We have this standoff between the two gangs. And they start killing each other. Jack's freaking the fuck out, all like, what is going on? And then all of a sudden, oh, just fun fact for me. And you probably didn't catch this. You'll probably have to catch it the next time we watch it, mm. if you do. But um, the 
there were a lot of Caucasians in that fucking fight you, scene. You did mention yeah, that. Yeah, there are a lot of Caucasians. There were probably three or four Caucasians that were fighting in there that they tried to make look Asian, and it just failed. I, I didn't catch that. But I did, yeah. There's did one, there is it. one that looks like Guy Fieri. There's <laughs> one that, yeah, Guy Fieri just... <laughs> And just it's so fucking funny. Another one that looks like Asian porn stash guy. I mean, not Asian. I'm sorry. That looks like fucking uh, 70s, 70s porn. Caucasian porn guy. <laughs> like, it's so fucking funny. And, um, but moving on. So then we have these storms. These three guys come out of nowhere. And they come out of nowhere. Is and they have this. Called? Yeah, they're called the storms. So one's rain, thunder, and lightning. Oh, okay. Thunder. Rain was the one. Rain was played by uh, Peter Kwong. He was in The Golden Child, and he's in a couple other things. I, 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 I want the knife. <laughs> Please. Uh, Please. But he, 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 let me yeah, finish. He was, he was, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> he was Johnny Tran in that. Always trying to upstage me. Shut up, bitch. But, um, <laughs> but I love you. he, yeah, I mean, he's he does a lot of american things james pax i personally do not know who he is he was and lightning. i'm yeah he's was he lightning. the one that you said was uh, mortal Kombat? that character yeah that so the guys of? that made raiden, raiden. I, mean, I mean mortal Kombat based raiden off of his character from yeah. this movie that's cool because yeah. i i understood that reference that because look, i totally yeah they played based, that game they based that look off of him because, and then, I mean, admit it, they had a cool fucking look. They're, oh, they they're, did. They're sure. outfits. You know what? Like, so fucking old school okay. China, if their, you will. Their outfits were cool, but I think, in, I guess, my opinion, their hats were a little too uh, See, I like the hats. village, like old village women basket weaving that's what like, i they like were, they were just so the handmade yeah that if they were some some type of uh, grand god or something where they're like are they worshipped or like like what what are they for me and especially because we are dungeon D- D- D players yeah for me what i would find more fascinating mm-hmm. if if i was a good god and, you know, loved my disciples. An awesome God! <laughs> Thank you. I would say that a hand-weaved, a hand-weaved hat... Woven. Woven, thank you. Think, a yeah, hand-woven, a hand-woven hat from a village mm-hmm. of women or whoever, made by hand, that looked a little plain... I would take that, and this will take you like, right back to fucking, if you will, gods of Egypt or whatever the fuck, the offerings. What offering is more grand? Is it the jewel? Is it a rich man's offering? Or is it a peasant's, something that a peasant made from hand to give you? Like, you could have somebody that can that's rich and just be like, I don't have to do shit Here's a diamond, you know, or you have the person that can't do shit or pay anything, and they're like, "Here, I made this for you, though." It depends on the god, I, I think. guess. Like, but what, I are they that. like a, a natural good? Like, there's those right. classes where it's like they're naturally good or neutral, chaotic neutral, chaotic evil, or just plain out fucking evil. Right. So no matter what they are, but I and also in a movie standpoint, I'm gonna go ahead and say that they were going old school China. Yeah, and that's and, a thing. And that's what they were portraying. That I, I really tried to get into the mode of the time and the type of movie it was. <laughs> yeah, like okay, this is the because you also notice later in the film they do go out of their peasant attire, if you will, and yeah. then jump into modern suits. Yeah, no, they yeah, go into you're they right. they bounce from time to time. Like maybe like that's their going out outfit. I guess I, to I, not like, even though they're doing something evil, it looks righteous yeah, I, I, because I, yeah. they're wearing like. I think it's their pe- ceremonial peasant gown, you know, garbs. if you will. I don't know. It's their title. It's what they are. Like that's a John Carpenter question. Yeah, maybe who knows? we'll have him on the pod Is, someday. <laughs> oh God, John. <laughs> but um, oh, love you. Uh, but he um, but yeah, you know, would. It, 
Would nowadays, if you want to look at it with the gods or whatever, would we be, you know, American gods? Would they be modernized? Or would God. they stick or would they stick to the old traditions like how they are in this film? See, would they stick to how they were? Would would Zeus continue to wear his fucking toga with lightning bolts? Or would he wear a fucking suit? Yeah. Would Odin fucking have his one eye gone and wear his fucking armor and shit? Or would he go Mr. Wednesday? Like, who the fuck knows? But I love the idea of we're going to stick to the fucking ceremonial side of how it was. That's what I like. I don't know. That's me. Well, and also, like, we don't... When we watch these movies, we don't talk too much about, like, our intel or our, like... Uh, inside or uh, opinions as much yeah. because we try to keep this quick this uh, well, well we want yeah. we want to watch the movie well, but also when we talk about it when we record we want to keep it as organic as possible mm-hmm. but like i didn't think of shit like that because you know we've watched we did watch american gods first episode we still yeah. need to get back to uh, season, season two, two yeah. but ugh, that's the thing like i I went into this movie thinking that it was just silly McSillingtons and there's yeah. there's no real depth to you it. You got to dig. You got to dig. You got to dig a little and, deeper. And, and, you Princess and the Frog. <laughs> dig a little deeper. <laughs> but you do got to dig and but it's there. It's there and it's you but know But that's what I love about our podcast is that we get to do this yeah. and we help each other find the it, yeah exactly find and, the and deeper meaning find, yeah but, find the deeper meaning of a film that we thought would yeah. be totally stupid and we'd never thought to watch yeah and think about it in a different way yeah so, so they do all that on. and then Jack tries to drive out when the storms come and he drives through this guy who's apparently eight feet tall low pan made by uh, played by uh, James Hong he's eight feet tall. <laughs> James Go Hong. ask Alice. But, uh... Go ask Alice. But, anywho, distract him. Sorry, I got so, distracted by the song. he's running around and drives through James Hong. And they get out of the truck and then, uh, Lo... Uh, what the fuck was it? David Lo... Lo Pan. Lo Pan's coming around the truck and does this... And the light comes out of his eyes and mouth and yeah. blinds Jack temporarily. And then uh, Wang cures it by just splashing some water in Jack, Jack's eye. You know, simple cure. Oh, wow. He, he, so, rolled, a natural, was, he rolled a natural 20 nat, with fucking water. Nat, nat 20 on the water. On the, on the healing, healing. On the cleric. He's <laughs> a natural cleric. Um, So he splashes him with water, and then Jack can see all of a sudden, and Jack's confused, and Jack's like, what the fuck is going on? They leave, one of the yellow turbans tells them what's happening, because they were hiding in a little house. What's going on? Yeah, and then they break away, they get out, and they have to pretty much run on foot, because Jack's truck gets stolen. And they go back to Wang's restaurant where his uncle seems to be really big into the legends and the history and all of these things of China mm. and is explaining to Jack and Jack's on the phone with the insurance company like all of us. All he fucking, cares about is his a, fucking truck. Right, having a, well, it's his livelihood. He's a truck yeah. driver. And, you know, and he's sitting there and he's arguing with the insurance company like all of us fucking probably do. Mm. and is just trying to figure out what he can do. And then Kim uh, Cattrall just kind of busts in, and, you know, apparently she's a lawyer. And they find out that uh, Miao Ying is at a uh, whorehouse. She goes to a... They take her to a whorehouse, and apparently they're going to try to drug her like they do, I guess, most girls. And Yeah, that's how it works. Sell her to, yeah. Do they, call, do they call it a whorehouse? Or they, no, or do they, feel like they massage called it... They parlor? called it... I don't... I can't remember what the hell they called it. They called it like, they called it by its name. It was like the White Tiger. They don't, I mean, you kind of get the idea of it being a whorehouse. Yeah. But they just call it the White Tiger. And Mm -hmm. I don't think they necessarily are all like, oh, the whorehouse. But no, they just are like, oh, any girl that goes to the White Tiger is not coming out. Well, if it was called the whorehouse, they would have been shut down. Right. But, so it's the White Tiger. And, you know, we don't get fully taken on there in, in that area but uh you know Mao Mao Ying is tied up and gagged and in a room and Jack goes in as a disguise as a your typical 80s white I kind of got a little white like, dude uh, I how you doing ma'am this is Jack Burton oh, god like I got a little raining cats and dogs oh, god. like 
typical like like forty year old virgin. Yeah. Thing. But I also got like a a hint of taken. Right. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. I mean. Looking for his so, daughter. So and he's and he's and when he finally gets with one of the with one of the escorts, he's like he's just sitting there and he's all asking her the questions. He's like, you know, do you girls just come and go? Like, how does this work? He's trying and to get she, into Yeah, he's trying to get into it. And she's all like, uh, maybe. I don't... And she's just, take your tie off. Yeah, I know what you mean. My wife gave it to me for Christmas. <laughs> and he just takes it off. And I'm just, just like, oh my God, this is great. He's He acts really too good of the white male who has that uh, job and life that you would see on a night uh, evening time television show yeah where it's like everything's perfect but he's just like yeah well my wife's not really doing it for me right yeah. now so <laughs> I, I need, I need my wife gave yeah i can't stop looking at porn magazines so now right. I, it takes a little more than i'm a playboy subscriber yeah and, but than, i'm here for the real thing yeah I'm, I'm here for something a little more dirty and risque right and so dangerous. all that and then the storms show up the storms show up and they pretty much raid the white tiger lightning steals meow raid in. the white tiger <laughs> So they steal Miao Yang, and then they take her back to, they take her to David Lopin. And Jack at this point is like, I've seen too much fucking shit, this magic shit, I'm done, I'm out, what the fuck is going on? (laughs) And then they explain to him, they're like, only myths and legends, like this is just shit we were told as kids, but apparently it's real. And Jack's like, alright, fuck it, let's go. So they go to uh, David Lopin's building. His office building, which is a front, obviously. He's like a demon guy. Well, he's a demon and plays. Ob- obviously, yeah, he plays. He plays as an old man. So they explain to you, Egg Shen and whatnot. They explain. They say David Lopan was once a young, like, you know, he was a young ambassador or something to the emperor at once upon a fucking time, mm-hmm. and he was a warrior. He was young. He was everything. And then he did something where he pissed off the god, their god, and then the emperor. Their awesome god? Yeah, sure. He reigns from heaven above. But, um, <laughs> so they, they piss, they, he pisses him off, and he, uh, he, they pretty much, they curse him to be in a, to live forever as an old man. Old, old, an not, old, not, wait, decrepit. Not just an old man, an old, gross, like, yeah, Pops all over his face. Can't fucking move. Can't do like, anything. Like just, uh, yeah. Beauty he, is the beauty is in the eye of the beholder. But holy shit. Yeah, and he's losing his shit, and he's just sitting there like, this is body is a tomb. This is my tomb. I am trapped here. I am buried here. I'm just a button. Indeed. But Man. he's freaking the fuck out, and he explains all this. And one of my favorite moments is um. Egg Shen, when he's talking about all this, he's even... Egg Shen, he says. He's like, you know, Chinese... It's so confusing. He was like, we have Buddhism. We have... We have, uh... We have Buddhism. I remember that. Yeah. We have all the Confucianism. We have all these different religions. Confucius. Yeah, we have all these different religions. We are so confusing. But anywho, he talks about all that, but... They're, they're doing all that, but back to David. So he... Uh, David! So they're freaking the fuck out, and then... Uh, <laughs> Jack and all them, they get out. They find the girls. The girls get captured because they show up. The girls get captured. And Lopan explains. Lopan's like, you know, I've tried breaking the uh, thing with other girls. I've tried breaking this curse that I have. Mm -hmm. So, you know, let's try to break it. And... All that shit. I don't know if that's going to fucking... You guys hear this chewing or not? If you hear a chewing sound, I apologize. If you have, like... Just go quiet for a minute. Let's see if it picks it up. Yeah, it picks it up. It picks it up. Okay, so... I'm sorry. We don't want to offend anybody with uh, uh, ugly, gross chewing sounds. But we don't know what else to do to keep uh, Opie our star child. So... All that, Quiet. they save the girls, and Lopan explains that he has tried to break the curse with other girls, but he needs a girl with green eyes. 
he couldn't find does it like he hasn't found any other chicks with green eyes with green eyes well that's why the in the movie they they're all like you know chinese girls do not come with green eyes it's rare and the point being that the god and the emperor put him on that curse because of the fact that no chinese woman has ever been born so with green eyes. So the rule is that the woman has to be She Chinese. has to have green eyes. Chinese with green eyes? Uh, no, because the rule kind of bends with Kim Cattrall. But uh, why is Because that- he has to... What he has to do is, is he has to uh, marry the girl with green eyes, and then he has to sacrifice her in order yeah. to be human again. Yeah. And so his idea is, you know, I found love with Mao Ying. Let me feel the pleasures of a woman once again by marrying her, and I'll just kill this American broad with green eyes. Like, not a problem. I'll marry this beautiful Asian chick, and then I'll just butcher the Caucasian. So it's like, yeah, okay. Great. All right. I didn't, so all didn't that... I, I just, I personally didn't catch... That's fine. ...that. I just thought yeah. that he was going to marry both No. Women he wanted to marry the one, and, and then one. he had to he had to marry to kill okay. in order to be human again. Okay, okay, I guess that's the same. Yeah, but um, so all that, and then they break the women out, and everybody egg shens out with their his bus, mm-hmm. and then we're to the point where now egg shen Jack and um Wang and a group of yellow turbans are on a little expedition fellowship of the ring mm-hmm. going to go kill Lopan and save the girls. Yeah. So they do this, they break in to Lopan's place <coughs> and then we start to come across we come across the Asian uh, version of a beholder from D and D, believe it or not. I love that I know, I love I I mean it's honestly it's Isn't really it good it's really good that we just so happen to have played D and D today and we are talking about a movie that I mean there is. <laughs> there's an Asian beholder in this movie and it's amazing. And like um, a beholder, like it's got the like, eyes, the round face. Yeah, it's a beholder. It's like a round. It's like a round head has like tentacles yeah. for like eyes a mouth. and shit. No, no, no. Oh, That's no. a you're thinking of a um, you're thinking of a mind flare. Oh, oh, oh yeah. yeah. Beholder is the round. It's the just round, that the just, floating just head the with floating the teeth, head toothy with maw. The teeth. Okay. Toothy maw with the fucking eye snakes, right? Eyes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I'm That's sorry. what was in this movie, except it wasn't a toothy maw. It was just a very fucking goofy ass smile. <laughs> just <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah. it was just funny but silly yeah it was great but they do this thing and then the guys drink this potion it's like ecstasy or some oh, shit yeah. and jack is just like oh my god i feel kind of invincible you know he was like you know uh, is it hot in here or is it just me and all the guys are just like it made me think of like harry potter like when he got that like vial of was it luck yeah, something like of luck, and he gave it to uh, Ron. Yeah, but it ended up being water. Water. Yeah, but he did drink it. Yeah, later they drank on, it, and he just felt so just. Oh my god, I so feel good. so good about right. everything. I just really want to see my good friend Hagrid. I just yeah, think that's a really good I place for to us go. to be. It's a very great place for us to be right now. We need to go. Yeah, 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 I love it, and that's exactly what it was essentially. So they go and they see the wedding happening. The wedding's mm. going down, and beautiful wedding. Right, it was, wasn't it? No, um, really. Said the bridesmaids to the chairman. <laughs> but uh, so they're freaking out, and uh, Lopan is marrying the chicks, and they disrupt the wedding. They yeah. disrupt everything, and um, Lopan and Egg Shen had this hilarious fucking D and D mixed with like a video game controller hands battle, <laughs> where they like do this thing and they start fighting with their energy i guess and then jack shoots at the fucking ceiling and rocks fall on his head and it's hilarious mm-hmm. and everybody starts fighting the yellow turbans are fighting great because they took the potion wang kills rain who wasn't much of one of the fucking storms which is really sad because they kind of did shit on rain and then lo pan goes through with the ceremony and starts to become human because he Gives the blood of to Shang Dai, and gives the blood to uh, of uh, what's her nuts Miao Yin, and he takes Miao Yin and him and Thunder go up to his office, and they're hiding up there, and he's all like, you know, oh my God, I'm turning into a human. It's working. Holy shit! Meet me in my office. Right. <laughs> That sounds really so lame. Jack, so Jack, that I know. Kind of sounds lame. I know. But they go up there. So Jack Jack and Kim Cattrall go up there with Wang. And Wang starts fighting off Thunder. And then Jack goes to try to get Miao Ying. He's doing this all with fucking 
with all this with lipstick on. It's gorgeous. Because he oh, kisses yeah. Kim Cattrall. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That, so he's doing all this. That was a, that was fun. Yeah. So does all that and then uh Lo Pan is holding Mao Ying and Jack shows up and pulls out his knife from his boot and then throws the knife and misses uh Lo Pan. Lo Pan picks up his knife and then looks at Jack and is uh, and I've missed this from the beginning. Jack always has this saying of it's all in the reflexes because he's got really good reflexes well, apparently. You know what? I'm actually like while you're saying this, uh there's a quote you have yet to mention that you say all the fucking really? time. Really fucking what? Something about keep the Oh shit. Keep yeah. Keep the light the Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking yeah, yeah, something yeah. burning bright and keep the the heat going cuz I don't know. Yeah, it's I know just what something it is you're trying to in say. In my mind it's I don't know if I should say it or put it in. But, um, I yeah, I it's, don't care. Uh, <laughs> I really don't care. Put it in uh, or oh say it. Could, do you remember right now? I think I do, but I'm just, god you, damn it, you got uh, me on the you, spot. I got you on the spot, and usually you say it all the time. Oh, my God. Uh, Too late. Moving on. <laughs> We're already almost at an hour. All right, so. so moving on. So, anywho, he throws it. I'll put it in. You people sit tight, hold the fort, and keep the home fires burning. And if we're not back by dawn, call the president. So he throws <laughs> he throws the fucking dagger, or the, the knife, and then he picks it up, low pan, and then just says, like, it's a good knife. Goodbye, Mr. Batten. <laughs> throws it at Jack. Jack catches the motherfucker, throws it right back at low pan, and hits him right in the fucking skull. Mm-hmm. And then low pan dies. There we go. In and out. That was done. so easy. Well, he became a human. So there you go. And that kind of is a reap what you sow. You were a god living forever even though you were cursed. But you become a human and you die. Hello. Welcome to our fucking world. Hello, goodbye. Hello, goodbye. Huh? Hello, yeah. goodbye. Yeah. So, thunder freaks the fuck out. Everything he touches doesn't turn into caca. Right, right. Caca. God damn. So he's freaking the fuck out. Thunder freaks the fuck out and pretty much does this imploding thing where he can make himself blow up to be bigger Mm -hmm. but he gets so mad that he can't stop himself and he blows up he fucking pretty much explodes because he just Mm -hmm. is so mad and cannot stop himself from growing it just blows up Mm -hmm. and then we come to everybody trying to leave and now lightning comes into the picture and lightning is freaking the fuck out and is just burning down the fucking building with his shooting out bolts. Can I, um... Please. I have this weird thought. Did you ever play a uh, garden on your arm? What the fuck are you talking about? Okay. There's this game uh, in, like, elementary school. You want to, uh, you grab someone's, like, forearm. Are you asking me to shave my arm? Absolutely not. Okay. But, um, you want to, it's, it's, it's pretty much, like, the lighter skin uh, most sensitive part of the forearm yes and you want to plant a garden and you rake right to okay put the seeds in okay and then there is thunder and lightning and then like it, it literally like creates a garden on your fucking forearm i don't want to keep doing this to your skin because I don't want to like fully hurt you, but it's pretty much a trick to to get somebody to beat the shit out of your arm. Someone to beat the shit and give you like 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 a raspberry or like a really. No, that's never happened. But you sure as shit did tend my garden. I'm fucking exposed right now. I didn't. Skin. I didn't. I didn't go full out. All. Uh, but anywho, let me take a picture of it. Okay. Just to, but um, uh, so back to it. So th- lightning is freaking the fuck out, and then Egg Chen kills lightning by throwing a statue of Buddha on him. So there you go, by lightning, and everybody makes it out. Yay! Everybody saved. Demons gone. Uh, storms Demons are gone. gone. And uh, throughout the movie, Jack does have like a little love thing going with Gracie Law, Kim Cattrall, and they get to the end, and Kim Cattrall is actually who was. You know, avoiding Jack's advances. She is now wanting Jack, playing the typical, oh, I don't want anything to do with you, but now I do. And then Jack's just like, you know what? I was doing, this was all wrong. I shouldn't have even been leading you on because it's not going to work. That was weird. And and I I don't know if that was... You know, guy like me, it's not not for you. And it's not, you know, I'm not... 
I'm a man that goes with the wind, if Which you is, will. Yeah, it's really weird for the time. Uh, I don't... Like, I wasn't... Uh, I was a little tiny baby when this movie came out. Um, do you think that was something that was progressive for the macho hero of, Hey, um, I really dig you and I would really like to be with you, but... I am, I'm a lone wolf and I need to... Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I don't but, know. Because normally, because it's, like, it's how... like, hey, the chick, she's fallen. Like, like, it seems like Kim Cattrall, she's fallen for him. And she's like, hey, I'll be with you. But he he says his thing that you just said. Yeah, he's just pretty much like, you know, it's just not, I, I'm not a man that will be around. I'm and then just... she, she's kind of like, huh, okay. Yeah, and then Margot, the yeah. the uh, reporter, is always, aren't you going to kiss her goodbye? And then Jack just turns around and he's just like, nope. It was so, he's yeah, like, it was, no. that was fine. It was so, like, anti. Because it was very, like, no, I'm not going to lead you on anymore because that's just how it is. Which is cool in my part. I don't know. I'm like, hell yeah, he's not going to lead on this chick yeah. that he, I don't know, he really did. And you could argue throughout the whole movie, he's he, thinking he's gonna fucking die. So maybe that's what he was doing. Maybe yeah, maybe, maybe he thought he was, he was just gonna for die. A quick fix. Who the fuck knows? I don't know. But we you know, know, we don't. We won't ever know. But that's the beauty of storytelling. You don't know, and it leaves you guessing. In my opinion, a good story is something that leaves you guessing. So that's pretty much the end. And then we go off to Jack. Driving off, and then this weird monster thing is in the back of his truck, and then credits. End of the film. So, Jack drives off, and the monster is hitching a fucking ride on his truck. And that monster, we didn't really bring that up, but that no. monster was very John... Carpenter, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You gotta lo- You gotta really give a shout-out to the craftsmanship. It takes you back to, like, the thing and The shit. thing, yeah. yeah it... Because it to me it was like a scary monster, but it was also kind of uh, it, it had a little bit of camp to it, mm-hmm. where you can laugh at it, but still I was like, oh my god, that's something really gross. That I do I don't want to encounter. Yeah, and they and they did show that with some of their like prosthetics and shit like that. Yeah. So yeah, shout out to the uh, the creature makers. Yeah, shout out indeed. So uh, the. Question of truth here. No. Very good. Okay. You'll never, never, watch never, ever, 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 ever will I watch this movie again. Mm-hmm. Even if it's a group of our friends watching it, I will. Ask, I will ask for your keys and I will drive home. Okay. Why? Is it because I hated fucking the last one? No. It has nothing. It has nothing to do with like this. Isn't a uh, a getting back at you thing. Right. It is... I didn't find this movie... And it's... I do hate myself for saying this because I love John Carpenter. I love Kurt Russell. I love Kim Cattrall. I, I... Like, the actor... It wasn't the actor's fault. Mm-hmm. This movie was just too ridiculous for me to ever want to watch it again. And I, and I, and I, and I see things that I can appreciate. I can, uh, uh, I'm going to quote one of my favorite drag queens, uh, Alaska. I can appreciate mm-hmm. because it brings out certain types of comedy that I'm glad are still somewhat out there. But this movie was so hard. Like from the first, from the beginning, I already knew, and I knew, yeah, and, I, I, and I knew you already knew that I wasn't. Gonna yeah, like and this. I'm gonna give you a hard. I mean, I, I have no idea how you think that way. I wish, but I can only respect that you feel that way because everybody's got their own opinion. Yeah, but again, it's just for me. It's like I mean, all of it was there. Like all it of just, it, it just really takes. All it, it, of it, it, was it doesn't matter if you have to watch this movie again or no. Maybe. Like, you know, and maybe you'll think different if you watch it again. Maybe. But it, it is all black and white right there in front of you. Like, all of the, everything that happens, the story is there. It is told. And it just moves on. Yeah, it's campy. Yeah, and it's, I don't, it's I a don't, classic it's guy not, fucking comedic movie. I don't know. I don't, and I, I don't want to fault it as being too... Uh, I don't want to be too, like, feminist and say, oh, this guy is just this 
typical, yeah, I got this, you know, keep keep the whatever. Keep the, the home fires burning and for not back by dawn, call the president. Finally, yeah. you got yeah, it. Got it got only, it only took you an hour. Thank but, you. But um, uh, it just, I'm hoping that it's me and something that I missed with the humor because there are so many people that I love this is. movie. I think it is. I, and, and honestly, and I'm going to say it. I, I will say this. I think that this movie has such a huge cult following and everybody talks about it. And I that, love... that, that that is why you do not like it. But the th- I, will, I will say that tooth and nail. But hold on, a, hold on a tick. I love cult movies. Yeah, we... but you have a thing, and I do too. This is just the truth. This is the truth. And, the, and if anybody else agrees, agree. Okay. But there is a thing. When a movie gets so popular or a show gets so popular... Then you'll be like, what's the fucking point? It's already up there. I feel that way with Walking Dead. I stopped walking, wa- watching Walking Dead Me after too. like the fucking fifth season. Me because too. it got so popular and it's like da 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 We were watching it together. Break- yeah, Breaking Bad. Never watched it. I never watched Breaking Bad. Probably never will because it got so fucking popular that it came to a point that everybody was fucking talking about it. And I was just kind of like, I really don't give a shit. Well, like, and I, I will agree it. with you on that. Especially when it came, when uh, the whole social media, Facebook, and spoiler alert thing right. started. But that movie wasn't around during that time. Yeah. And I didn't know about it for the first time I saw it was like the early 2000s. And I thought, okay, this this is a fun campy thing. But... I don't know. It just didn't, ugh. and it. This is a hard thing to admit because I really do believe that I I have a very good eclectic sense of humor. I love offbeat humor. I love crass humor, like Monty Python. I fucking love South Park. I've been rewatching South yeah. Park. I mentioned earlier, and their humor and like basketball and like it's. I almost like hate myself for not liking this movie, but I really did not I don't enjoy think this movie yourself. at all. That's fine. That's fine. I don't think you should hate yourself, but I'm going to go ahead and say that sometimes movies do need a second watching. And I have hated fucking films and I've given them a second chance. Yeah. And sometimes I'll be like, okay, it was actually better the, the second time. You know, will I ever watch again? I don't know. Let's we'll try it. Okay, again. fine. And then in yeah. five years, the five year rule. Let's we'll try fucking it. We'll watch it. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and do that. So until then, everybody, we've kind of held on uh, to you uh, long enough. So. No, it's not even that long. We're oh, okay. we're well, totally then we're fine. Cool. Fuck it. Yeah, but um, tonight uh, we decided that every, uh, once a month we're going to uh, do a viewer, uh, a listener pick, a listener right? pick, and yeah. we do have. He is a deep friend of the pod. Yeah. It's uh, on his... He is a fellow podcaster. Uh, the podcast is called Fighting With Myself. Uh, if you follow him on uh, Instagram or uh, Twitter. Twitter, it's yeah. Fighting With... F-W-M underscore pod, maybe. Yeah, Juice, kill me if I don't know, man. No, no, but, no. Yeah. Here, I'll... Oh, yeah, here we go. Because we've got... I think about time since we uh, arguing to the teeth. <laughs> arguing to the fucking teeth. Okay, so it's. I was uh, right. So uh, our number one fan, who is a deep friend of the pod, F W M underscore Pod, fighting with myself podcast. He gave us a recommendation for a movie a while ago, and the film is. Called... You're our number one listener. Our number one listener. Number You're our one, number one listener. Our number one fan. Yeah. The Amateurs. The Amateurs. Yeah. Okay. And it came out in 2005. It's... See, I don't know this movie. I don't either. Okay, so this is going to be really This is a movie that neither of us have seen before. Yeah. And stars Jeff Bridges, Ted Danson, and uh, a couple other people that are well-known, but... The, those two are. So that's a good pick because I have no idea what I'm doing. It's going a good into, pick, and, and it's, you, it's a good, so. <clears throat> it's a good uh, type of movie. I did watch the trailer. It has something to do with a small town and porn. Oh, good! So I'm ready. I'm for it. Okay, let's do it. Then. Yeah, we're doing it. All right, juicy, you've got it. Juicy juice, you've got it. The amateurs. That's going to be the next. Uh, Flick, everybody, go ahead and give that a watch, mm-hmm. and then uh, we'll go ahead and talk about that next week. Yeah, watch um, it first, and then yeah, watch like, yeah. it, and then give the pod a listen, and we'll see how it goes. 
And let us know what you guys think also, you know, when you watch the film. Let us know. Get on our social media and talk to us. Let mm-hmm. us know. Again, we all thank your support. And Absolutely. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, check us out on Facebook. Instagram. Uh, Instagram. Twitter, Twitter. Movies. Contemplation. Just look us up. And yeah. We're, we're podcasting there. on every podcasting platform. We're on every we're everyone. Every, we are everywhere. Yes. Thank you all again for listening. And yes. we'll uh, talk to you all next time. Yes. I'll get better with our social media. <laughs> I promise it though. Yes. Thanks, Bye. Bye.